Hello, this is Jonas from vhdlwiz.com. In this video, I'm going to present my latest article and tutorial how to create a PWM controller in VHDL. And I'm going to link to this article from the video description. So if you want to read the details and download the code and run it on your own computer, then go to the video description and click the link, which will take you to this article. And I'm going to simulate the design in Monosim in this video, and we're going to implement it on the FPGA. And we're going to have a look at the output signal in the oscilloscope. But first, what is PWM in the first place? So PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation, and it's very easily explain what it is. PWM is a method of controlling an analog device from a digital FPGA pin. We all know that the FPGA pin can only have the values 0 or 1. It can be off or it can be on. It can't be anything in between. And if we want to control the power or current flowing through an analog device like a, a DC motor or an LED or a speaker system through an amplifier, for example, then we have to somehow translate this digital signal to an analog voltage or analog current. And PWM achieves this by rapidly switching on and off the full power supply. So um, PWM controls the analog power, but it can only the FPGA pin can only control it to either 100% or to zero, as indicated by this blue graph. And by rapidly switching it on and off, for example, with a kilohertz frequency, then we can control the average power that the uh, device is getting. So because of the inertia in the uh, analog devices, like a DC motor, for example, if we just switch on and off the current flowing through the motor a couple of thousand of times every second, the motor is not going to be able to move with a 100% um, efficiency uh, when we are at the max voltage. And because of this, it's going to be the same effect as if we were regulating the voltage to, to the motor. We can regulate the average power. If, if you imagine this uh, yellow or orange line, it's a sliding window of the power. And this uh, blue line is the output from the FPGA pin. Then we can regulate the uh, power that the analog device is getting by how long the FPGA pin is at the um, max uh, vo voltage, how long it's at, at the on state. So if it's off all the, all the time, then the average power flowing through the analog device, of course, is zero. The more time the FPGA pin spends at the 100% uh, or max uh, power output, the more the average power flo flowing through the device is. So if we keep the FPGA pin on continuously, then the power flowing through the for example, the DC motor is going to be 100%. And in this video, we're going to I'm going to demonstrate this on the LED on the eye stick. We're going to switch on and off the the, um, the LED with a fast rate so that the human eye cannot see the difference between on and off. And it's going to look like uh, we're re regulating the illumination of the LED. So I already said that how long the uh, the FPGA pin spends, or how much time the FPGA pin uh, st spends at the on state, determines how much power flows through the device. And this is called the duty cycle. So if we want to regulate the power to um, 50%, this is 50% duty cycle, then the FPGA pin is on half of the time and off half of the time. If the duty cycle is 70%, then the FPJ pin is on 70% of the time and off 30% of the time. So it's very easy to understand. It's PVM is ingenious, but it's also easy. It's used for high-tech applications like electric cars or even aircraft. And I know that because I have worked in the aerospace industry. And uh, w the reason why PVM is uh, so efficient is that it switches on and off the current with a full power. So the current is either on or it is off. And that means that the least amount of um, 
excess uh, power is going to be wasted in the transistor. So usually the setup is like this. The FPGA pin controls a MOSFET transistor and the load here indicated by our LED is in series with the MOSFET transistor and also with the power supply. And if this was a DC motor, the power supply would be, for example, 300 volts or 200 volts. But here is an LED on the um, FJ board and it's 5 volts. And this is the design that we are going to simulate and run on the Lattice iStick FJ board in this video. So I have created the PVM generator module. And this is the entity for the module. I'm not going to go into the details of the code in this video because it's all explained in this blog post. We're instead, we're going to run the example. So it has a generic uh, input which lets you control the PVM frequency in relation to your clock frequency and the resolution of the um, duty cycle. So how tightly you can control the um, on and off states and how detailed your precision of control on the power through the analog device can be. So th that's controlled by these generics. And in the port of the PVM module, so of course the clock signal and the reset, but also the duty cycle input. And the duty cycle um, decides for how long the um, FPJ pin is going to be at the on state and how long it's going to be at the off state. So if you assign zero to this, then the output is going to be uh, only zero if you assign the max value is going to be one all the time on the PVM output. And if you sign um, a value which is between the max and the min value, then the PVM output is going to be this one right here. This is the one that goes to the FBJ pin. This one is going to be high half, half the time, like this. It's this one, half the time is going to be at the one state and half the time is going to be at the off state. So I've already um, downloaded the example project. You can download the example project from this blog post. Most of my blog posts have a download form and this is the one. Scroll to the uh, bottom of the uh, several places here in my blog post. Uh, look at look after the uh, need the Molsim project files form, and it also includes the Lattice Ice Cube project. So if you want to download the code and run it in Molsim or implement the design on the Lattice Ice Stick that I'm using, just enter your email in this form and press give me the files. And that's what I have already done. So I have the files here, a zip file which you you will receive, and I'm going to unpack this one right now. So this is the file that you will receive if you use or. Yeah, the zip file that you will receive if you use the form. And inside there's an explanation for how to run this. And there's the Lattice project and the Mollison project, the simulator project, and the source files. So I'm going to open this uh, design now in VS Code. Like this. And we can have a look at the uh, top module. So in the top module, I have, in, I have instantiated the PWM module, this one here. Also the reset module, because we need to have a reset. We have a supporting reset module and a counter module. And this counter is going to count on the duty cycle. It's a free running counter. So it's going to count from zero to the max of this duty cycle so that uh, we can have some changes on the LED and we can see that the PVM module is actually working um, in the simulation and on the FPGA board. And I'm going to just run the simulation now just to show you what this looks like. So I'm starting model sim. This is the student version of model sim which you can download for free. And now I'm going to uh, do as uh, I wrote in my how to run .txt file by typing do and the path to the downloaded project users my username downloads and the name of the project pwm underscore led run dot two and this is all in the uh, how to run .txt file in the zip that I'm downloading this command so when I'm running this now we can see that it's compiling the files, it has compiled the files. 
there's an explanation for how you can run the simulation and it's really that easy just do as it says here type run tb and you can run the example that you downloaded using the form from my blog post and now the simulation is running and we can see the duty cycle is has this sawtooth shape and that's the counter um, module, which is uh, not part of the PWM module, but it's for regulating the uh, PWM output, the, uh, the the duty cycle input, so that we can have some some interesting uh, pattern to look at. So this is the PV PWM output, and you can see here that it's um, it's uh, um, it's changing as the duty cycle is changing. And by the way, this PWM outp output is the same as the LED output here because I'm connecting the PWM output to the LED number 5 on the Lattice iStick development board. And if I zoom in, for example, here in the beginning, when the, P, um, when the duty cycle is a low value, this is a duty cycle, it's 44 out of 256, we can see that the um, LED 5 output, the PWM output, is one only slightly, uh, only a slight time of the, <laughs> only a s small amount of time, and it's zero most of the time. And we can see as as the timeline progresses, it increases, the on state increases, until it's going to be one at the at the top of the sawtooth is going to be continuously the one value so um, as as we increase the duty cycle input we see that the on state increases in duration so at the end here it, the um, the P pwm output is one uh, or the um, power supply is on uh, almost continuously and it is continuously in the end here but then we wrap the duty cycle back to zero and we start over again so that's how PWM works. And I'm going to try to um, implement this design on the uh, lattice ice stick. So I'm going to open Ice Cube 2. And th this uh, is something you can do if you have uh, Ice Cube 2 and if you have the ice stick also. So I'm going to open here. I'm going to the lattice ice cube 2 project, which is in the zip file that I'm download I downloaded. So this is the actual zip file i haven't made any changes and now i open the project go to tools run all to uh, implement this design it's going to take some time we are synthesizing the placer place and route is running and it's a small design so it's not going to take a lot of time to implement and there we see bitmap has been generated and now we can program the FPGA. So I'm going to open diamond programmer and open the diamond.xcf file in the um, zip file in the lattice ice cube 2 project directory. We can open diamond.xcf here and it's going to have all of the settings for programming the lattice ice stick. But you have to select the file name because that can't be, be a ported between uh, computers if you export the project you have to select the file name and you're going to find the fi file name if I go back to the uh, zip folder so this is the PVM led zip folder inside of the uh, lattice ice cube 2 project inside of the PWM LED implementation folder inside of SBT inside of outputs inside of bitmap and here you will find the generated bitmap, which was generated by IceCube 2 just moments ago. So just select the bin file, and press open, and now we're ready to program the FPGA. So I'm going to plug in my device now, plugging in my device. And we're going to program the FPGA and see what happens. Pressing the program button.
and there we go it has uh, been programmed and we can see on the board here it is uh, flashing or illuminating the LED so it's illuminating with increasing power until it gets to the max power and then or the max illumination and then it goes back to slightly s switching off for a slight amount of time bec before it intensif intensif intensifies again so this is the sawtooth counter we are s we are seeing um, controlling the duty cycle of the LED uh, output, the LED number five on the iStick. But I want to look, at, have a look at this in the um, in the uh, oscilloscope. I have an oscilloscope which I can use to watch to uh, to look at the uh, output signal. But since it's it's routed to the LED, we have to make some changes to this top module, the pwm underscore LED dot VHD file. So I'm going to create a new output signal, call it output pin, for example. It's going to be an out mode and standard logic, so same as the LED. And I'm going to assign to this one, same as PVM output. So output pin gets the value of PVM underscore out. So now the uh, I'm going to assign to one of the output pins on the stick the same value as we are assigning to the LED so this pin is going to be a copy of the LED so that we can connect our oscilloscope to it and then I also have to go into the SDC file the uh, no the PCF file the physical constraints file in the project and this is all in the zip file that you can download I'm going to duplicate sorry <laughs> duplicate this line with the P the uh, LED 5 output, which is the PVM output. And I'm going to change it to output underscore pin and pin number 112. So 112 is one of the header pins on the uh, eye stick. And I'm using this pin so that I can connect the oscilloscope to this one. So now the output pin is a copy of the LED 5 pin. So the LED and the output pin are going to be identical. So now we can save this file. I'm going to go into IceCube 2 and reroute by going to Tools, Run All. And this is, by the way, the ice stick is the same uh, board that I'm using in my, both of my FPGA courses, my VHDL courses, the Fast Track VHDL course, and the Advanced Dot Matrix course, which opens in a few weeks from now. So if you buy this FPGA board, you can run all of my examples and you can also uh, take both of my courses with this board. So back in the Diamond Programmer, I'm going to press Program now. And it's not going to be any difference on the FPGA board because we haven't made any changes to the design files. We have only uh, broken out the uh, PWM output to an, a pin that we can connect the oscilloscope to. So I'm going to connect the scope now. I'm connecting the scope from, from ground, one pin to the ground, and the other pin to pin 112, the one that I, I added to the design. I'm going to switch on my oscilloscope now, see what it looks like. This is a cheap oscilloscope, but it works. And here we can see the duty cycle actually replicated so we're not looking at the duty cycle now we are looking at the um, pwm output but we can see how the duty cycle affects the pwm output um, together with the illumination of the or as the illumination of the led intensifies the high period on the um, uh, pvm output grows so in the end it's all once it's uh, continuously one but that's just a brief moment and we can't uh, really spot that now and then it goes back to zero and this is the sawtooth counter working its magic so that's a brief uh, overview of this um, this design i haven't gone into the code but the code is very detailed explained or i explain in great detail in the blog post in the article so if you want to learn and understand how this code works, it's not that difficult, but it's a bit of explaining because I want to explain everything to you in the tutorial. So just click the link in the video description and check out the 
full suite modulation blog post. Okay, that's all that I had for this uh, time. So thank you for watching and until next time, stay safe.